Are you on a first name basis with the baristas at Starbucks? Are you a self-described addict to Pepsi or Coca-Cola? Hi, my name's Mary Johnson. I'm a registered dietitian and owner of Healing Food for Cancer. February is Cancer Prevention Month. And in today's video, we're going to explore why and how to drop that sugar sweetened or artificially sweetened beverage habit. Why should you reduce the amount of sugar or artificially sweetened beverages? We'll tackle the artificially sweetened beverage question first. And that it boils down to a couple of studies that I will briefly mention. The first found that individuals who consume artificial sweeteners are more likely to gain fat around their midsection. The second is that artificial sweeteners tend to cause our brain to think that there is sweetness coming, rightfully so. And when that sweetness doesn't come because there aren't any calories in the artificial sweetener, the brain is still looking for that sweetness and it tends to make us more hungry for something that's sweet or just increase our hunger. There's certainly something that for many individuals from time to time is certainly permissible, but it's not something that you want to be consuming beverage after beverage after beverage all day long because it will uh, increase your appetite and result in unwanted uh, fat storage around your midsection. Recently, I did a video about how being overweight or obese will increase your risk of cancer. And I'll drop a link to that video in the description below. So the reason to reduce sugar sweetened beverage intake is that it is much more likely that you will gain weight if you are drinking beverages throughout the day that are high in sugar content. The first tip is everything in moderation. So I'm not here to tell you to never have a sugar sweetened beverage again. My second tip is to set a goal and to write it down. And it could be that you decide that you're gonna have one less sugar sweetened beverage a day, or that you're gonna add a glass of water or a cup of tea. Tip number three is to keep a variety of choices around. And that's why I have uh, pulled out all of my uh, tea selections. I never just have one or two types of tea around. I always keep many, many different kinds so that I always have many choices to pick from. You know, you might want to go for something uh, that has um, a nice like cinnamon spice profile. Um, I have usually have a couple of different kinds of green tea. Uh, the choice green tea is just a really nice plain green tea. Um, but if you like mint, um, this is a terrific flavor that has some mint in it. Um, but there, there are lots of fruit flavored teas and um, ginger flavored teas combined with citrus, for example, as um, well as um, good old uh, black tea. The other option is um, if you've got water, um, just plain water, you can infuse it with all kinds of um, fruits. So you can use frozen or fresh, but there is nothing more refreshing than uh, fruit flavored uh, infused water. Uh, my next tip is to consider um, sparkling water. And I'll tell you, when I was looking at giving up my um, soda habit, um, this was what got me through. So I found a number of different uh, sparkling waters that I like. Um, of the three, I would say um, this Waterloo brand is one that I have really been enjoying. I like the black cherry, but I um, have this um, usually just plain sparkling water on hand so that if I want to infuse something, again, um, I can create my own flavor profile. If you're a coffee drinker and you enjoy coffee, that's perfectly fine too. The important thing is that you're not adding anything to it like cream or any type of sweetener. So if you like plain coffee, iced or warm, that is completely permissible. 
The fourth tip is to keep a beverage handy in some sort of a water bottle. And I've got a couple here and whenever I leave the house, I leave with two water bottles. There's usually tea in this one because it's insulated. And then I leave with one that has water. Tip number five is to give yourself grace. Keep at it. This may be something where some weeks it's really easy to keep up with the goals that you set and then other weeks you may completely fall off the wagon and that's okay. Just keep trying. That's all that matters. I know over time that it's something that you can definitely improve upon and it will be beneficial to your health if you're able to bring it down. With that, I'll remind you that these videos are not intended to be a substitute for one-on-one -on -one individualized care. Please work with uh, your care team to determine what the right amount of liquid is for you each day, how much water you should be consuming, and if you are interested in learning more about working with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can visit my website at healingfoodforcancer.com. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe if this video was helpful, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.